It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So the saying part, or the speaking part, that Jesus said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Mountain represents anything just too big for you. Anything that looks impossible. And he said, and you, you talk to it. Sometimes we're so intimidated by the size of the problem that we go silent. And the Lord told me, if you're silent, you will lose by default. If your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth. In other words, you could say the, the first or the initial act of faith is when you move your mouth. And that's exactly how you got saved. All right, let's try that again. I said, that's exactly how you got saved. Come on, that you confess with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord. Come on, you believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, and what happened? And salvation kicked in right there at that moment. Come on, for with a heart man believes, underwrites with the mouth, What? Confession is made unto salvation, or the confession or the speaking part precedes the experience of salvation. Well, if you kind of look at it this way, he said your confession precedes your possession, right? In other words, your confession is always going to take you to the destination of your possession. It's going to bring it right to you. Your confession. So what is your confession? Now, instead of asking people how they're feeling, you say, what is your confession? And then Paul goes on to say, hold fast to your confession. Uh, the Amplified says, the confession of your faith without wavering because God is faithful, that promise. Woo, come on, what is your confession of faith? So he says, hold tight, don't turn loose of it. It'll determine whether you have victory or defeat. It's what's coming out of your mouth. So hold on tight to your confession of faith. In the morning, afternoon, Dad Hagen said, even if failure is on all four corners. Let's try that again. He said, no matter how things look or how you feel, your confession of faith. The words that come out of your mouth will change the scenery in your life. In other words, your confession. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And notice Jesus said anybody can do this. So you don't have to be extremely brilliant. Come on. You don't have to have a lot of money. All you have to do is what? Have faith in God. And so when you say to have faith in God, this is the way faith works, and it works the same in every area of your life. In every area of your life, faith works the same. Moments you learn how faith works, I was so thankful that Dad Hagen taught me how faith works because I saw that in Mark 11, 22 and 23 when I was 17. I thought, if I can learn how to do this, I can get anywhere I need to go. Even the desires and dreams of my life, they can all come to pass if I can learn how to have faith in God. Y'all still here? So here's kind of part of the problem, a little bit of part of the problem, is sometimes among some of our churches, you know, people think they know so much about faith that they almost won't even hardly pay attention while you're teaching on the subject because they kind of think they already know that. Thanks for that two grunts and one nod. <laughs> they think they kind of already know that subject. They're going, I'm sure glad everybody else is here. I hope they get this service. The sermon. So that's what I did here, Brother Hagin. I was like, I'm glad everybody's here. And the Lord said, if you pay attention, I'll show you things about faith you have never seen before. Amen. 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 
So sometimes, you know, I use the illustration of my grandson, Gavin. We have swimming pool in the backyard, eight grandkids, so I make sure all the grandkids take swimming lessons probably at, what, two or three years old. I mean, just the earliest possible time. I tell them I pay for all of it, and they, when they come over the house, there will be a test. We got like shallow end, and we got the deep end. We got a diving board over here, and the poppy is going to give you a test. <laughs> so we're trying to, Gavin went and took his lessons, and he came back, and he was doing better but most of his time was successful in the shallow end, which is really not swimming. <laughs> so he comes to the house one day, and I could tell he really couldn't swim, and I want to make sure he could swim. So if I wasn't around, you know, I want to know his abilities. And so we, I was standing by the deep end, just happened this way. I'm not sure how it happened, but I was standing by the diving board of the deep end, and here comes Gavin, man, they just came to the house, and he, I want to swim, and here comes his daddy, which is my son-in-law. They come running back to the back pool, and uh, we're ready to swim. I'm going to swim. He said, Poppy, I know how to swim now. I know how to swim. Poppy, I said, that's really good, Gavin. I'm, I'm, I, that's wonderful. And then his dad comes around. He can really swim, Poppy. He can really swim, and I, but I knew he could you know, there's one thing positive thinking. But I ain't interested in positive thinking. But his dad's trying to encourage him. Well, I appreciate that, but I still want to know if he can swim. Come on, do you know having faith in God is more than just positive thinking? Come on, you're on the door of the supernatural and God comes through that door. Deal with your situation. So, so I, he comes running up to me, and so I'm by there, and his dad's telling me he, he can really swim. So uh, before he could even do anything, I grabbed Gavin. I said, show you, Poppy, how you can swim. So I just threw him in the deep end. <laughs> Perfect test, I mean. <laughs> so his, my son-in-law could tell he was a little shocked, and I thought, why are you so shocked if you are so sure? So Gavin went down the deep end, and he was sinking and sinking and sinking. While he was sinking, he was making swimming motions. Well, you know, swimming motions are not what we're interested in. Swimming is what we're interested in. So he's making swimming motions, and he's sinking. I told my son-in-law, if I was you, I'd jump in there and save him. So he, he gets his phone out, you know, in his wallet. He jumps in the water, pulls Gavin up. And I said, now you take him back to swimming lessons. And there will be another test. <laughs> Somebody said, no, that's cruel. No, it's really cruel to think that he can, and he really can't. Yeah. Are y'all still here? Yeah. Amen. So sometimes God says... We're going to have to take you for some more lessons. <laughs> People say, I know about faith. I know about faith. Woo, I know about faith. Boom. And they make faith motions while they're sinking. Now, I'm planning on mountains moving is what I'm planning on. I, I'm planning on some giants getting killed, baby. I, I'm planning on some changes of scenery. And so I don't want to just make faith motions. I want to know how to live by faith, how to walk by faith, how to access the God kind of faith, and changes in the scenery will happen. Woo! Amen? So here... Whosoever shall have whatsoever. Let's try it again. Whosoever shall have whatsoever. Amen. Because you're having faith in God. Right? When I went to college, my daddy said, there is a God and I'm not him. And that just meant he wasn't going to be sending me no money. Listen, <laughs> you better get to meet God. <laughs> You better learn how to have faith in God, amen, how to make contact with God and his word, amen. Now, back to just the saying part, say, say, say. Come on, y'all got your gang sign ready. Say, say, say. 
Somebody say, what you going to be doing today, tomorrow? I'm going to be doing this right here. In other words, faith in God. Say, say, say. Come on, I believe. And Dad Hagen said it this way. Listen close. He said, you can actually school yourself into faith with your own words. All right, let's try this out. All right. You can school yourself into faith with your own words if you're struggling with something that looks impossible or doubt or fear. He says, you take the word of God, put it in your mouth and say and say and say and say and say, and say. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, so I heard this years ago. I heard Pastor Youngie Cho from South Korea. And uh, 1973, I think it was. And uh, he had, at that time, the largest church in the world, maybe 50,000, product of American missions in South Korea. Well, he said, I have 50,000. I heard him a few years later, and he had over 1 million. And he taught the same message both times. Y'all stay with me. Let's try this again. Whatever worked for you at 50,000 worked for you at a million. All right, let's try this here. So, so, so he, he's teaching that on, on faith. And then Dad Hagen said, he asked the Lord one time, he said, Lord, how come some people don't get increase in their faith? Because Dad Hagen said, if my faith was not increasing, then I would be concerned. Well, after I heard him say that, I thought, well, I'm starting to get concerned. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now I'm not increasing. And so here's what he said. Um, he said 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7 is where the Lord said to him, 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7, Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. So he said, Apollos was trained by Paul, so they preached the same gospel, same word of faith. And so Paul said, when I preached to you was the planting. And then Apollos came after me and preached the same stuff. And that was the watering. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. So he said, well, Lord, how come sometimes people are not getting increased? And he said, the Lord said to him, because... They reject the watering process. In other words, he explained it like this. He said, the first time you hear the word and get a revelation of the word from God, that's the planting. But no matter how good the seed is, no matter how good the ground is, if it's not watered, it will never increase. All right, let's try it again here. In other words, there's the planting, then there's the watering. So he said, first time you hear the word, there's a planting, and you get thrilled about the word. He said, but the second time, the watering process, or the third time, fourth time, fifth time, tenth time, that you hear the same word. He said, if you reject the watering process, in other words, if you think you already know that subject, all right, let's try it again. If you, come on, you just start acting like, kind of like I know that. I mean, you already know that. You've heard that 10 years, 20 years, however long you heard. If he said you start acting like you already know that, then you develop what is mental assent, which it sounds like faith, but it won't move a mountain. In other words, you will have to receive the word the same time, same way, come on, the second time, 10th time, 100th time. In other words, you're going to have to get just as happy. Come on, the fifth time and the 10th time and the 100th time as the first time you heard Mark 11, 23, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. I don't know about you, but the first time I heard that, and this is how faith works. Wow, I went, is that right? <laughs> Nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. Let's practice that again. Nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. 
I used to watch this little cartoon called Far Side Comics. You ever watch that? And I watched that, and uh, the one that I laughed at, I mean, there's a bunch of different ones. You know, it showed like a, a boneless chicken farm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> chickens laying all over the farm. Uh, then it showed, um, it showed <laughs> something like a 747 taking off and a frog at the bottom of it with his tongue stuck to the bottom of the 747. That, that's all it was, was a picture. I just started laughing. I thought, what's going on in that frog's mind? <laughs> Is that if he can catch that bug, he will never lack for bugs the rest of his life. <laughs> hey, when I heard Mark eleven twenty three 23 the first time, I was like, if I catch that bug, baby, I ain't never going to lack for nothing else the rest of my life. In other words, my words, what I say, my voice, Amen. Yeah. And then Dad Hagen would come along and say something like this. Don't ever talk lack. Don't ever whine about how high prices are. Talk about the lack of money. Always say the money will come. And then he would throw in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I do not lack. I do not lack for ability. I do not lack for opportunity. I never lack for money. I never lack for money. I do not lack for strength. The Lord is my, come on. But there's something about you saying it, your voice. Amen. The word in your mouth. Praise the Lord. The Lord said it to me, this, uh, he said, the word, he said, my word in your mouth. My word in your mouth is like mouth to mouth resuscitation from God. <laughs> that you get God's word that came out of his mouth, put it in your mouth. Praise the Lord. So what, what you are going to say, so my mama's favorite was Psalm 27. Come on. Or you could go down the line concerning the blood of Jesus. What, what are you saying about the blood over your life and your family? Come on. What does the word say about the blood? What is your confession about the blood? Amen. <laughs> you got a list about who you are in Christ. Come on. I've hung around faith people before. And I never heard him say one scripture, one confession, one praise. You're going to have to open your mouth. And, and you can't wait till next Sunday. Amen. You have to open your mouth and start declaring and speaking and saying what God says about you, you know, and who you are in Christ. Come on. It's not enough just to say, I know that. I can think that. I can agree with it. But the authority is in your voice. I said the authority is in your voice. Are y'all still here? It's in your voice. Yeah. Amen. In the beginning, God said, and then he saw, and then he said, and then he saw, and then he said, and then he saw. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, a lot of people want a change of scenery, but they're going to have to make a change of sound first. In other words, it's the sound that changes the scenery. Your voice is your address in the realm of the Spirit. What are you going to say? Really, the thing I love is Jesus actually, if you look at the life of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he was constantly confessing his identity and his destiny. The most impressive thing about Jesus Christ was his words. Nobody ever said, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, nobody ever said, he's got a pretty smile, we like his teeth, come on, we, we like his, uh, his robe, that's one of the nicest ones we've seen, we like his donkey, that's a pretty fast donkey he's got, nice donkey, nobody ever said, we like his sandals, nobody ever said, we like his hair, nobody ever said none of that, but everybody said, 
There's something about his words. There's something about his words. When he speaks, when he speaks, when he talks, sick people get healed just hearing his voice. When he speaks, storms stop. Come on, when he speaks, demons leave. Come on, and when Jesus comes along to Mark 11, 23, they, they, they marvel at his words, and he said, you see what I just did? Anybody can do what I just did, and it'll work not only in a tree, it'll work on a mountain. It'll work on anything. <laughs> Woo, come on now. Jesus didn't say, I'm Jesus, you're not. No, he said, whosoever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, let me finish my Yungi Cho story now. Let you go wherever you're going to go right now. But uh, so I heard Yungi Cho. <laughs> Years later, I heard him again. I thought, interesting. I wonder if he forgot he preached that or if God knew I needed it. All right, let's try this out over here. I was wondering. <laughs> I mean, I listen to that, and, and I go, I wonder if he forgot he preached that. No, he didn't forget. So he's just going over it again till your eyes light up, and you go, Amen. So he said, he was eating with the leading neurosurgeon in Seoul, Korea, the leading neurosurgeon said, we have a new discovery in the study of the brain, and that is that the speech center of the brain exercised dominion over the whole central nervous system. That's a leading neurosurgeon. Cho's eating with him, Pastor Cho, and he goes, uh, uh, he said, it's so much so that when we're operating on the brain, we can probe different parts of the brain, different parts of the body respond. When we touch the speech center, the whole central nervous system responds. So the speech center in the brain exercised dominion over the whole body. So he's telling this to Pastor Cho. Pastor Cho says, oh, he said, I know this long time. <laughs> so the neurosurgeon says, how you know long time? New discovery. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. James. And so the neurosurgeon says, well, who Dr. James? He said, Dr. James, New Testament. <laughs> Tongue, tiny member control, whole body. <laughs> Amazing what would happen if we could get your tongue Come on, God's just saying, if I could get your tongue, it will determine the direction, the destination, and the quality of your life. He said, the neurosurgeon said, so that if we're doing surgery on somebody, we listen to what they say. If they say, I'm so weak, come on, the message is sent to your whole body, prepare to be weak. If somebody says, I'm getting so old. Speech center sends a message to your body to prepare to die. Oh, no, that ain't serious, is it? That ain't serious enough for you? In other words, the words and the influence of those words on your own body and on the direction and the destination of your life, you cannot afford to be silent about some things. Let's try it again. I said, you cannot afford to be silent about something. You're going to have to take the Word of God, put that in your mouth. Come on and say something about it. Woo, come on. And when the enemy's coming against your mind, what are you going to say about that? You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, he always touches their mouth. Never underestimate the power of your voice. God is a faith God, and without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Lift your voice and open the door to the supernatural in any situation you are going through. If you're silent, you will lose by default. There is a miracle in your mouth. This week, we want to offer you Mark's brand new CD set Mountain Moving Giant Killing Faith for your offering of any amount. Your faith may not prevent all mountains, but it will move them. The Bible story of David and Goliath gives us a picture of how faith in God is released through faith-filled words. Never run at your giant with your mouth shut. If you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. For your gift of any amount, you will receive also Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural book. 
In this book, you will learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. God has given every believer a measure of overcoming faith. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. It doesn't matter what you may be going through, failure is not an option. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Jenna Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Hebrews 4.14 says to hold fast to that confession of faith in him. Don't turn loose of it. In other words, if you'll hold fast to your confession, it will bring you out of defeat and bring you right into victory because you're bringing your confession or your words into agreement with what God says he has done for you and who you are in Christ and the power of the Word of God. And so I like different quotes. One of them I learned from somebody who said, God can be no bigger in you than you confess Him to be. Or in other words, God's the Almighty God, but as in your life, He can be no bigger than your personal confession of who He is, what He has done for you, and His goodness in your life. So it's important to hold fast to your confession of faith, faith in God, faith in the word, faith in the blood of Jesus. And no matter how you feel, your confession of faith will bring you out of depression, bring you out of darkness and bring the light of God's word and the reality of your redemption. So I encourage you to get these messages on the confession of your faith. I call it the greatest confession that Jesus is Lord and the reality of his lordship means that sin can no longer dominate you. Satan can no longer dominate you. The past cannot dominate you. Jesus has set you free. He is Lord. Now you confess and agree with Jesus and agree with the word of God. So I encourage you to get these CDs, these messages, or you can download them at markhangers.org. And this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, and you've got chapters on the power and importance of your confession and the scriptures and dare to declare and speak what God says about you and who you are in Christ. Until next time, I'm Mark Hankins. May God bless you abundantly. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.